Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Build. We got a hell of an episode today. My name's Cody Groom. I spend my time showing you guys amazing cars and the stories behind them. Woo! Damn! It's about the people, places, and of course, cars. Welcome to The Build. Chris Forsberg is a three-time Formula Drift champion and is currently the owner of Forsberg Racing. He currently has three championships, 17 wins, 57 podiums, and 92 top 10 finishes. He started competing in 2004 and has been going ever since. Nice angle from him. In the last 10 years in FD, Forsberg has been using his 370Z. This is the first season of a new car. Forsberg's new car is none other than the 2023 Nissan Z. Coming with a 400 horsepower twin turbo V6, and in a six-speed manual, you can see why people are excited for this car. Obviously, you're, you're changing cars. What's going through your head on that? Well, what's nice is there's a lot of similarities between um, this chassis and the 370Z, utilizing a lot of the same parts as before. So not physical like parts off that car, but just the same brands, the same... Uh, components in the engine, the um, same turbo setup, uh, same suspension setup with BC and part shop. Now here's where it might irritate you a little bit. The Z does not have the Z engine. Instead has the VR38 out of the GTR. Am I complaining about this? Hell no. For what this thing needs to do, it needs to have a thousand plus horsepower. So that original engine just isn't in the question. Clearly we got our engine located. VR38, the same engine that we've been running for the past couple years, and it's just absolute powerhouse. You know, we've been making like 1,200 wheel out of these things for years. And we are still, you know, kind of figuring out what they do and don't like. We run it in the Ultimaniac as well, and we've had, you know, zero issues with that car. The thing's been running um, tip top, putting the power down, it's all great. A um, couple issues on the pro car because it gets thrashed a little bit harder. We run nitrous through it as well. We run uh, VP import, which is like the highest octane fuel you can run in these engines. <laughs> but yeah, so a couple of the things that we did differently on, on this engine package uh, or this mounting setup, I should say, is that we actually did the engine mounts to the frame rails instead of to the subframe. You can take the cross member out of this car without actually dropping the engine. Some of the other things we had to do on this chassis, we actually um, cut and extended our manifold on this side because since we have the factory frame rail it was kind of rubbing onto uh, the old setup and mainly because we're running bigger turbos now when we first built the setup we had the the g25 660s from garrett and now we're running g3770 so we're making uh, more power those two turbos alone are capable of making like 1400 wheels so pretty pretty stout little turbos and so yeah we had to cut this, clean that up, get a section of tube, cut that down, lay it in there, reclock this up so it's nice and parallel with the other turbo and weld that all back in. Because everything kind of moves and swells. Like this turbo will move like a half of an inch when it gets full red hot after a run. So you'll see, you know, this manifold just kind of like, you know, rolling in a different direction. So at this point, the VR38 that you guys are seeing is not the VR38 that actually ends up in this car. They are strictly using this VR38 to make sure that everything fits, lines up, and then as soon as the brand new engine comes, pull the engine again, put that motor in, and then line up all the parts and components with that. So yeah, for the chassis, we worked with uh, Rob Parsons over at Vending Solutions, and he's got the cage kits. So he came down and he scanned the car so that we had the perfect interior structure of it and then he built this roll cage on the computer, laser cut it out, bent it in his CNC bender, and then shipped it down to us, and it was a perfect fit. All the tubes are pre-bent, they lay right up into the A-pillars, and when they get welded all the way up and through to have full contact, so there is actually no gussets in the car. These are just like light plates that we cut and bent and laid in there through some tacks, and then glued them in uh, to keep that nice and watertight um, and smoke-proof, so whatever you want to call that. Smoke tight. Like I said, we're gonna have this boxed off. All the holes in the firewall will get plated off. And then this big uh, main hoop is gonna get plated off as well so that it's all separate. 
So there's no fluid uh, contact within the cabin. So the whole chassis, you know, gets stripped down, obviously, and then we cut it up in some fashion. Body was perfectly fine. Obviously, it was brand new before we started, but we want to take it down to this level because this is the end result of a pro drift car. We take out the factory sheet metal and we have a nice uh, wide body coming uh, for this chassis. So it'll, this is basically just a flange to mount it to, right? And then we remove the factory uh, taillight buckets. We actually shave them all down and we'll rehang these uh, with like little rods so that um, it can all kind of move if we really get into the wall. Hatch line comes down. They have this nice new uh, molding piece on the new chassis, which looks really good. Just lays in here. Gives it that like samurai katana blade look. But um, outside of the exterior styling, yeah, we cut all of this out because eventually it's going to get crushed in. So this is like a high impact area uh, for drifting. You know, this is where the chase car wants to be is right in this door rear quarter panel area. And if this really gets crunched in, you know, it can actually pry it back out into position here. Had to you know, cut a couple welds right there, had to drill some spot welds up here, and then just like kind of freehand cut this all off to uh, give it that, you know, nice clean look, especially once it's all painted. You know, right now you got that factory white paint, uh, some steel, some of the primer, some bare metal. So once it's all this steel it gray, it's just gonna blend together really well and look good. Nothing to look at yet, but so we obviously cut this part out from the factory uh, sheet metal because it gets pretty much crushed in every run, uh, ideally. <laughs> it's getting crushed in almost every run. So we're gonna weld in um, a tube all the way across the back of this car to cap off the end of the frame rails. And then we're gonna add a crash structure around like that uh, to protect the back of the car. And then from there, we're gonna have these little wings that bolt onto each side that will be the replaceable collapsible piece when we do actually bump into the walls. So this piece will you know, bend and move and rotate to not affect the rest of the car. If you've never watched Formula Drift before, Formula Drift is a little bit different than other racing. Basically, you have a lead driver and a chase driver. The lead driver is gonna go and have to hit certain points on the track, slide out the rear end, and make sure to go through different zones. The chase driver then has to emulate that driver's line. To me, it's such a cool sport because you see the talent. It's not about getting to the finish line, it's about actually the precision to follow someone else's line that you don't know what they're gonna do. When it comes to the build, the Z took six weeks to build. Now I'm talking literally from getting the car to finished and driving, six weeks. Coming from the 370, it's very similar. There's a few things that we're able to carry over, right? However, it was still a brand new car build, so we're going all the way down to the chassis, all the way down to the bare metal and back up again. So we had the car for six weeks, full strip down and measuring and welding and fabricating, took the first three. And then we painted the car literally three weeks ago today and rebuilt it for the last two and a half weeks. You'll see with Chris and the team, there is time spent on making sure that it, it looks good as well as performs. Incredible amount of work that happened today. So we got both subframes in, front and back. We got all the suspension on and we are going through some of the plumbing and such too. So you gotta remember, at this point, the car has not been driven. It has not been tested. It has literally been put together and shown up to this event. The car, first touched the ground Wednesday, like 6 p.m. And that was the actual time of our debut. Loaded in the trailer, went down, debuted the car, and then came here to the track yesterday, went through the whole car, systems check, going through everything, and then we went straight into today. No practice, no dyno. We basically just like sent it straight in for the first practice.
First run, we have the nitrous off, we have it on low boost, go out and just give it like a nice easy pull, like 80% at best, just to see how the engine's doing. It was basically our little dyno pull. Send the log over to our tuner, he checks it, everything seems good, makes a couple small changes. We go out to do our first like actual pass. I pull up into the chase lane. Uh, Brandon Sorensen was in front. I give him to like basically turn one to the corner before I left the line. But what I did not know is he spun into turn two and I come around turn two. And there was just nowhere for me to go. And so I slid into the side of his car, put a nice big crack in the side of our car. Fortunately, the hit only led to some damage in the body kit. So the Z is actually running a Street Hunter wide body kit designed by none other than John Sabal, who we recently highlighted a few episodes back in the Porsche build episode. I gotta say, I wish it looked like this from the factory. That first crash wasn't all bad. It was the icebreaker of the day. After that, Chris Forsberg went out and sent it. You know, it's like you want to take it easy and ease into it, but these cars don't like that. You know, drop the tire pressure, adjust the suspension appropriately, and just go out and put your foot through it. comfortable. There are similarities between this and the old chassis, so we're allowed to carry over a lot of notes and information, so that's why we're able to hit the ground running yesterday and qualified eight with only eight laps in the car ever. Forsberg ends up taking eighth place, but just like most motorsports, it goes off of points. So now Forsberg is eighth in points, brand new car after the first event of the year. I'd say that's a success. 